Origins and Insertions of the Trapezius. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching. And unlike all of our other videos, I'm not taking up the entire screen today. I am in the top right hand corner. And that's because I want to share with you some really important information on the screen, which is actually taken from our level three muscle memory flashcards. And I want to use this to help orientate you around the origins and insertions, as well as the muscle actions and the primary plane of movement and the exercise examples for the trapezius muscle. So you might be doing this as part of your level two anatomy and physiology or your level three anatomy and physiology but just to let you know that for this exam for level three the content that i'm going to show you on screen is level three content but i'll also give you some tips of how you can make this more appropriate if you're level two that you're working towards because you don't need quite as much detail you'll be pleased to know so as we're working our way through i'll relate to both of them and if you also want to test your knowledge then make sure you check out the three mock questions that are alongside this video if you're on our blog, you just scroll to the bottom of the page and on that point, you'll then see all three mock questions that you can test your knowledge with. If you're not on our blog yet, then click the link that is with this video and it will literally take you to that point. So first of all, this is how we use our flashcards. So what you can see in front of us on screen on this video is our muscle memory flashcards. And this is something that we offer whereby we've got a really clear image of the muscle and we do this for all of the muscles but today i just want to talk about the trapezius and the reason why we use flashcards for this is because it's really important to commit it to your visual memory and in order to do that we need to make sure that you have a really clear image so the first thing i want you to do is to not look at me in the top right hand corner but look at the flashcard image you can see on the screen and really commit this to your memory so look at the shape of the trapezius the trapezius is a big diagonal big diamond shape and as a result it's split into kind of like two triangles one on the left hand side one on the right hand side and that diamond shape is all of the trapezius and it's got three different sections to it what we call upper fibers mid fibers and lower fibers. So now, can you see the lines that you've got on this shape, on this trapezius muscle? Can you see how at the very top portion, they're almost moving diagonally? That's what we call the upper fibers of the trapezius. Then as you look further down into the middle of it, these lines, these striations are going totally horizontally across the two shoulders. That's the middle fibers of the trapezius. And then at the bottom, again, they move diagonally, which are the lower fibers. So all three sections make up the one muscle called the trapezius. But because the fibers move in different directions, you get lots of different muscle actions, which makes a really good muscle to be able to learn because we've got to now explore all the different muscle actions as well. So first of all, let's explore where the origin insertion is in your words. So touch the back of your skull right now, right at the base of your skull. And you can see this lined with a little red line. Um, that's the point I want you to touch. And then imagine it going all the way down your spine um, from the very top of your but base of your skull going all the way down, including all of your thoracic vertebra, which basically brings you to the bottom of your ribs. That line down there is the origin point for your trapezius. That's on the stationary part of the muscle. Therefore, it's the attachment that is called the origin point. Then you'll notice all of these fiber directions that I was talking about a moment ago come out from this origin point, and then they go to various other points. Now, these are the insertions. So let's find those in your own words. First of all, we've got the lateral edge of the clavicle, which if you follow your collarbone now right across the front of your, of your body, and then you come to the lateral edge, which means the outside edge, this is where your, your trapezius inserts, but it also inserts on the spine of scapula. Now, the spine of scapula is this knobbly, bony line that's at the back of a scapula. So whenever you see an image of the scapula, you can kind of see the spine running across it. That's also the insertion point. Now, this tells us two things. First of all, it's going to have to involve an action that relates to the scapula and something that relates to the clavicle. Therefore, the trapezius actually moves the shoulder girdle, not the shoulder joint. And there's a clear difference. So as you're looking at this image now, can you see how it doesn't go onto the humerus? It doesn't go onto the arm itself as an insertion point, which means it stays amongst the shoulder girdle. Now, the shoulder girdle is made up of the scapula and the clavicle. It doesn't include the glenohumeral joint or that ball and socket joint. And the shoulder girdle can do actions like elevation, depression, retraction and protraction. And that's just the, the scapula moving in the back. 
However, uh, there's nine other actions that our actual joint can do on the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. And that's not what we're going to talk about here at all with the trapezius. So just know that the trapezius has an action on the shoulder girdle, not on the ball and socket shoulder joint. And that's a really important note to be aware of. So first of all, now let's just take this information and see how they relate together. So we're going to layer on. So now you know the origin point is the base of the skull and down through the spine. Let's layer on a little bit more detail. The number of vertebra that these are on are going to be C7, which you can actually feel uh, is the larger knobbly bit at the back of your neck, right at the bottom. And that means it's the seventh cervical vertebra. And then it runs all the way down your thoracic vertebra. And it's on the spinous processes, which is the knobbly bit sticking out the back, that go all the way down from T1 all the way down to T12, which basically includes all of your thoracic and all of your rib area. So we're going right down the spinous processes of the spine. Now that's the origin in the words that you need to know for your exam. Then the insertion point like we've gone through is the spinous scapula and the lateral edge of the clavicle. Then as these two points draw together, so as the insertion is drawn towards the origin, this creates a muscle action in the concentric contraction of the muscle. So this is why we wanted to look at those lovely lines going across the muscle, that striation. These are your line of fiber. Now imagine that that muscle fiber, as it contracts, is going to get shorter and it brings the origin and insertion closer to each other. Usually the origin will stay still and the insertion will move towards it. Now, if you look at the upper fibers, which are on the upper part of the trapezius, you'll notice that these have the role of elevating the shoulder girdle. So this is whereby your scapula is literally going to lift up at the back like you're doing a shrug. That's elevation of the shoulder girdle. The middle fibers will retract the shoulder girdle, which is kind of like squeezing your shoulder blades together at the back, like you want to crack a walnut between them. That's going to be the middle fibers. And the lower fibers role is actually to depress the shoulder girdle, which is pulling the shoulders down and back. Now that basically means that the trapezius has a really important role because it can do so many different actions of the shoulder girdle. Now this means that it can also move in two planes of motion. We've got the frontal plane of motion and the sagittal plane of motion. So first of all, sagittal is gonna be because we've got retraction of the shoulder blade here, that happens in the sagittal plane. Whereas elevation and depression happen in the frontal plane. And that we can remember that because we're gonna view it from the front. Then also the exercise example I want to go through with you is the next way to layer on this information. So the exercise example, I want you to think about a seated row machine. Now set yourself up, you're on a resistance machine and you're from this point pulling backwards. As you pull backwards, your scapula retract, which means that they're going to pull towards each other as if you're going to crack a walnut in between it. So I would like you at some point today to go and actually try this. Go and do a seated row action. Feel how your scapula pull backwards towards each other and that this is the role of the trapezius. Also, if you were to do an upright row position whereby your elbows come up nice and high in front um, and as you do that, you elevate your shoulder girdle, that's going to be the role of the trapezius, but the upper fibers. So you can kind of feel this, the muscle being moved. You can feel how that muscle feels on your body and that will help you remember the origin, the insertion and the muscle action. So this is how a really key way of learning muscles. Notice what we did. We looked at the name of it, trapezius. We looked at the image and the whole time we've had one clear image that you can just keep committing to your visual memory. The more you look at the image, the more it starts to ingrain that neural pathway to help you remember this muscle I can see is my trapezius. Then we learned the origin insertion in your words. Then we learned the origin insertion in the technical words. Then we layered on the muscle action, the plane of movement and exercise example, so you can really feel it moving. And this is what's gonna help you learn on every muscle you need to know for your exam. Also, if you, as you're going through, you'll probably have lots more muscles to learn. So there's about 50 muscles to learn for the level three anatomy and physiology and about 26 muscles to learn for the level two anatomy and physiology. And that can feel like quite a lot of information. So you see what we've done with that flashcard on screen, whereby you literally had that one clear image plus the list of origin insertion and your muscle actions and the exercises worked. We've done this for every muscle and every group of muscle um, that you need to learn for your exam, which chunks it down so you can literally just learn 
one muscle group per day or one muscle per day. And it just means that it chunks it down. So you're not trying to learn everything all at once, but our done for you. Muscle memory flashcards are everything you need to learn and revise to ace every muscle question in your level two or your level three anatomy and physiology exam. They come digital. So they're digital download via our login area. And that means you can print them off if you wish to, or you can keep them digital and refer to them just like we did on screen here. And it means you can access that really quickly. What's included is you get a clear image of the muscle, like what you saw on screen a moment ago, the muscle name and location, the joints that are crossed, simple to remember origins and insertions, and what each muscle actually does in relation to exercise. Plus, this is mapped to whether you're doing level two or level three. So what you saw for the trapezius muscle a moment ago actually was the level three flashcard. Whereas on the level two one, it doesn't have about primary plane of movement. And it's also got a more simplified origin and insertion. So you don't need to know it in as much detail. And we make that really clear for you. So you can stack up the information relevant to your exam. Now, what you can see on screen is, can you see that um, some people decide to print off their flashcards? And once they've printed them off, they can stick them all over the kitchen or on the office walls. Some people even put them on the back side of their toilet door. And it just means that it's there for repetition. So you've always got it in front of you. So you don't need to go and make your own flashcards. We've done it all for you. We've got all the image, all the origin insertion. And you know that as you work your way through, it'll prepare you for that exam. But most importantly, it's not just about the exam, is it? It's about being confident in your knowledge as a fit pro, because as soon as you can be confident in your knowledge and you can use this in your planning, you can use it to make sure you're putting the right training systems in the right places. You can use it to help you understand the exercise library that you get given at level two. All of this information stacks up to help you become confident in your knowledge and in your ability to instruct as a fit pro. And that's what we really want. So as we wrap up today, make sure that if you do want to find out more about the flashcards, you can click the link that is alongside this video. And remember, go and check out the mock questions as well if you want to. So there's three mock questions to test your knowledge on the trapezius origins and insertions based on today's content. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do, because that's where you're going to get more videos just like this that'll help you with your revision. Have a wonderful day ahead. And we'll speak to you soon.